In Syria, the ongoing bloodshed is provoking a large-scale humanitarian crisis. The UN says around 100,000 escaped the conflict last month, the largest number so far. Most of the escapees are now in Turkey, but the authorities have closed the border to those with no passports as the camps swelled by more than 80,000 people. Let's get more now from RT's very own Paula Sleer. Paula, what more can you tell us about the situation on the Syria-Turkey border? Well, at least 10,000 Syrian refugees for at least a week have been stuck on the Syrian side of the Syrian-Turkish border. And this is because Ankara is simply unable to process the growing numbers of people who are fleeing Syria to Turkey. There are already 80,000 Syrian refugees inside Turkey, and Ankara is afraid that these figures could swell to at least half a million. Now, Ankara has been complaining that the international community is not doing enough to help it. And to this end, it is calling for a so-called safe zone or a buffer zone to be created inside Syria. Now what we understand is that such a zone would extend some 20 kilometers inside Syrian territory. But the problem is that to create any kind of humanitarian zone you need first to have a no-fly zone which certainly suggests foreign intervention. And there has been a lot of criticism about this from the international community. Certainly the United Nations Security Council has not given its nod when Ankara brought this up in the past. But we do understand that Ankara is going to ask the UN Security Council later this month to create this buffer zone. It is highly unlikely that Russia and China will give its nod, but certainly we are witnessing a growing humanitarian crisis. At the same time, we know that the head of the International Committee for the Red Cross is in Damascus. They are meeting with Syrian officials who are trying to find together some kind of way of assisting these refugees and resolving the situation. Now, Paula, you've recently visited a massive refugee camp in Jordan. Tell us what kind of conditions are these people living in? Well, we've heard for quite some time from humanitarian organizations that the situation in these refugee camps is a crisis. Last month, in the month of August, some 100,000 refugees crossed over from Syria into Jordan, into Iraq and into Turkey. This is the largest number of Syrian refugees in one month to leave the country since the crisis started last year, March. In Jordan itself, we're looking here at 180,000 refugees who are already in the country and the authorities there, just like Ankara, are unable to cope. Uh, Jordan has its own lack of water. At the same time, there have been various incidents where some of the refugees have had clashes with security police who've prevented them from leaving the camps. Now, I spent quite some time in those camps talking to some of these refugees, and I can back up from first-hand experience what they, as well as what humanitarian organizations are saying. What the refugees told me is that the sanitation is far from satisfactory, that very often they are standing in queues for hours waiting for food. There are not enough tents to go around people are sleeping on the streets I spoke to a number of women who were complaining of sexual harassment one person perhaps put it the best he told me that him and his family had fled Syria to escape death but here in the refugee camps they were dying a slow death at the same time there are concerns that you just need a spark to erupt into a flame there are concerns particularly from the Jordanian authorities that there could be rioting we heard this warning go out today there are also concerns that there could be further clashes so the main concern at the moment is that the situation is so volatile you could lead to an even further, bigger humanitarian catastrophe. All right. Paula Sleer, uh, thank you for that report on uh, updates with Syria and Turkey's border. Thank you.